we can we can uh, start. I'll, I'll do an introduction uh, and and then introduce uh, of Jimmy Think Tank and then introduce Mr. Rashi. So basically, this is our weekly Jimmy Think Tank uh, platform uh, and event that we always um, hold uh, on Wednesdays at 9 a.m. EST time, organized by Jimmy. This is a platform where we bring together all Jimmy partners and Jimmy Think Tankers community. Uh, Every time we have a speaker, basically um, an expert of, of an industry, specific industry talking about a trend around innovation, um, uh, an expert which might be a potential partner or an existing partner of Jimmy talking about the innovation state of country. Uh, we have also other um, innovators who talk about innovation management tools and practices and products around Jimmy and how they are moving forward and advancing innovation in their countries. Um, basically, um, we um, have always internal and external experts, and I am really glad and honored today to introduce Mr. Rashid, Professor Rashid, who is the founding director um, of uh, KVI Holdings. He will talk today about addressing major lithium-ion battery issues for electric mo uh, mobility and beyond. He's an American a graphic scientist, an engineer, an inventor with many years of experience in the industry and research. He is known for his critical role in developing the graphic node for lithium ion batteries um, and his research on, on that. He has worked on entrepreneurship. He has worked uh, with many multidisciplinary teams around the world. And basically he has been focused on devel developing new and innovative devices, materials for aerospace applications. So, so we are really glad to have this interesting topic today. And Mr. Rashid, uh, please, the floor is yours. Please feel free to uh, add any other thing that I missed in your introduction. I'm going to share the screen for, for you. Actually, no, uh, can you wait? Because I, I can, I can uh, use my, now my computer is working. So I will uh, uh, start sharing my, uh, Erila, thank you very much for the introduction and also for organizing this webinar. Uh, I'm uh, Rashid Yazami, uh, now from Singapore. Uh, I've been here for about 12 years uh, after having spent uh, 10 years in uh, California, more specifically in Pasadena, where I worked uh, with the California Institute of Technology and also with the Jet Propulsion Laboratory of NASA. Uh, mostly on developing uh, new materials for uh, rechargeable lithium ion batteries. Okay, so today uh, I'm going to show you some of our latest uh, developments in the uh, advanced battery management systems and addressing uh, with this, uh, the technology that we developed, we hope to address some of the issues uh, relating to the future of lithium ion batteries especially in the uh, electric mobility space. So this is uh, uh, the outlook of my presentation. For those who are not familiar with lithium batteries, I will just very quickly uh, present what is a lithium battery, how it works. And I will uh, show the uh, limitations for lithium batteries today. And then uh, uh, introduce the, uh, some of the methods that we have been developing, especially the NLV, the nonlinear voltammetry, and uh, with some applications, uh, including ultra fast charging and uh, augmented batteries, quality control, life extension, and so on. And also, I will share with you some of the uh, funny things that we have uh, found by, uh, uh, you know, plotting, you know, the, the data from uh, the NLV and found that it makes kind of art, okay? All right, so uh, for those who are not familiar with uh, lithium batteries, basically a lithium battery has uh, three major components. One is the, uh, the anode, which is uh, based on uh, carbon materials, especially graphite. And uh, lithium can intercalate between the layers of graphite. And this is how we store the charges in the, uh, in the anode. And the, uh, on the other side, the, it's the, the cathode, which is the plus pole of the battery. And the cathode can be either lithium metal oxide, like lithium manganese, uh, cobalt, uh, nickel manganese, cobalt, uh, cathode materials, and also 
uh, lithium iron phosphate, which is the, the, the second most important uh, industrial uh, uh, cathode materials. Between the anode and the cathode, there is a, a separator, uh, which physically separate the anode from the cathode. So as there is no uh, contact, direct physical contact between the anode and cathode, otherwise we have a, an internal short circuit. And that uh, separator is microporous uh, polymer material that enables a liquid called the electrolyte to, uh, to, to wet both the anode and the cathode. And the electrolyte uh, consists of uh, 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 an organic solvent or a series of solvents or a blend of uh, different solvents especially uh, carbonates like uh, ethyl and carbonate, d ethyl methyl carbonate, and so on. And uh, in that electrolyte, this liquid electrolyte, there's um, a lithium salt, which is dissolved. So lithium salt, uh, most common one is the lithium hexafluorophosphate, LiPF6. Uh, and uh, it's dissociated in Li plus and the PF6 minus. So uh, the lithium ions are actually in the electrolyte, where, whereas the lithium, other uh, species of lithium are uh, uh, intercalated into the anode and the cathode. Uh, and the, the, uh, basically during the charge of the battery, uh, lithium at the beginning is mostly in the cathode side in the plus pole, like uh, the NMC, the lithium, uh, nickel, manganese, cobalt. And uh, during the charge, uh, the operation, I mean, the, 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 right, the right hand picture uh, shows the charge where the um, lithium ions are uh, moving from the anode, from the cathode to the anode. So there's the intercalation of lithium from the cathode material and intercalation of lithium in the anode. And uh, the lithium ions are circulating within the electrolyte. So basically we are delitiating the cathode and litiating the anode. And as a result, the, the voltage of the cathode will increase as a result of an oxidation. And the uh, voltage or potential of the anode is decreasing because of the, uh, the reduction uh, due to the lithium intercalation into the graphite. So at the end of charge, if the, uh, uh, the cathode is uh, based on uh, metal oxide, and the anode is graphite. Uh, at the end of charge, the voltage is about 4.1, 4.2 volt. Okay, so this is why this battery has been called the four volt battery. Okay, now uh, during the discharge, the uh, uh, reverse reaction takes place, which means that the lithium is deintercalated from the anode, from the graphite, and uh, is reintercalated back to uh, into the, the the cathode. And as a result, the, the, the voltage of the, uh, the anode is increasing and the voltage of the, the cathode is decreasing. So the, 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 op, the, the voltage of the cell is decreasing during the discharge. So this is very common. And uh, again, the lithium ions are circulating within the electrolyte from the anode to the cathode during the discharge. So basically this is how it works. And this operation of charge and discharge can, re can be repeated hundreds of times, sometimes thousands of times, depending on uh, the rays and the temperature and the, the physical conditions and, and uh, under which the, uh, <clears throat> the, the battery is operating. So uh, in average, a lithium ion battery delivers between 500 and 1500 cycles, charge and discharge. So uh, this slide shows the different uh, materials that have been considered for the uh, lithium ion battery. So uh, there is a, a dashed line here in red color, which separate the anode from the cathode. So the anode materials are low voltage and cathode materials are high voltage, as you can see here. And uh, there are many candidates uh, and uh, like the lithium uh, cobalt oxide, lithium nickel uh, oxide and the NMC as well. And from the, the uh, anode side, we have the lithium titanate and graphite and also metallic lithium can be used as the uh, uh, negative electrode here and also silicon. So uh, the thing is that's what we need uh, in a battery is that the, uh, the voltage of the anode should be as low as possible and the voltage of the cathode should be as high as possible. So the difference in voltage 
which actually uh, accounts for the energy density of the battery should be as high as possible. So for the uh, uh, metal oxide based cathode materials, it's a four volt. Some uh, uh, exotic materials like lithium cobalt, uh, lithium cobalt phosphate, lithium manganese phosphate can, be, can go higher than four volt. There are five volt uh, uh, cathode materials. But at that voltage, the, the uh, electrolytes may be unstable. So uh, industry goes now for mostly the uh, four volt using uh, lithium cobalt or lithium nickel or lithium manganese uh, based uh, uh, oxides or the lithium uh, iron phosphate, which is here. As you can see, Li, LIXFEPO4, this one. And uh, the voltage is a little bit lower. It's about 3.4 volt. Uh, so the energy density of uh, lithium iron phosphate is lower than that of uh, the oxide. From the anode side, the, the most popular, uh, most, I would say, uh, used anode material is the graphite anode, uh, which I happen to be the inventor. Where I invented the graphite anode in 1980. And uh, until now, it's uh, the most uh, preferable anode for, for uh, uh, commercially available lithium batteries. And the other anode material is the uh, lithium titanate, like this one, which has a spinel, a cubic phase. And uh, the voltage, you can see, it's, it's very high. So uh, if you combine lithium titanate with lithium iron phosphate, you have a battery of about two volt, or uh, so its uh, energy density is very low. However, the combination of uh, titanate and lithium iron phosphate provide a battery that can be charged in five minutes. So that's another advantage of the lithium titanate is a very fast uh, uh, anode and also the lithium iron phosphate is very fast cathode. So the combination of two gives a very uh, high power uh, and high power, uh, high power density battery. So the, yeah, I mean, in uh, 2014, there were four uh, engineers and uh, inventors who was, were recognized for the invention and the development of the uh, uh, lithium ion battery. From left to right, uh, we have uh, Dr. Yoshino, uh, who uh, actually worked for Asahi Chemicals in Japan. And uh, he uh, was the first who developed the, I mean, developed the first prototype, the first working prototype of lithium ion battery. Uh, at his left hand, uh, Professor John Godinoff, a very famous professor from Texas, uh, University of Texas in Austin. And uh, John was behind the, the invention of the uh, cathode material, especially the lithium cobalt oxide back to 1979, but 1980. Uh, at his left, uh, uh, Mr. Nishi, who was the uh, vice president of Sony uh, Energy Tech Company in Japan. And uh, uh, Mr. Nishi was behind the first commercialization, production and commercialization of the lithium ion battery within Sony back to 1991. And uh, uh, myself, uh, Rashid Yazami here, and, uh, uh, I was awarded the, the, the Ripper Prize for the invention of the anode, the graphite anode, which actually was discovered almost the same year in nine, the end of 1979 and the beginning of 1980, the same as the cathode of John Godinov. Except that that year I was just starting my PhD project and I didn't know much about good enough. So it took, took a little time, I mean, from 1980 to 1985 to uh, the Japanese uh, researchers and engineers to develop the first prototype, uh, mostly at Asahi Chemical, and then it moved to uh, mass uh, production by, uh, by Sony in 1991. Okay, a very important thing is uh, what we call the figure of merits of a lithium ion battery that uh, shows what we are looking for in a, in a battery. Uh, number one is a specific energy. This one is called also uh, energy density. It's expressed in watt hour per kg per, ki per kilogram or watt hour per liter if we are talking about the volumetric energy density. So that's energy density converts actually to the time you, you can use a battery in your cell phone or how many miles you can drive when you fully charge your battery in a car. 
Okay, so this is very important. That uh, of course uh, industry has been uh, developing the I mean uh, materials, new materials to increase the energy density. The first battery that was commercialized by Sony in 1991 had an energy density about 90 watt hours per kg. Today, modern lithium ion batteries, the best, the highest energy density is close to 270. So it's like 3x uh, energy density uh, improvement since the, uh, uh, the commercialization of lithium ion batteries 1991. However, uh, the energy density now, uh, since I would say the last four or five years, has been almost uh, uh, on a plateau. So we have not increased significantly the energy density, at least for commercial batteries. So the best battery I have tested in my lab had an energy density of about 270. But the most, most of other batteries that we can find in the market are about 250 watt hour per kg. The other uh, uh, figure of merit is the, uh, the specific power. And the specific power is uh, expressed in watt per kg or watt per liter. And it goes with the rate by which the battery can be charged and discharged. And also if you are using a car, I mean a battery in a car, it gives you actually the speed of the car, how fast can you go? And also uh, acceleration if you need to accelerate. So this, is, this goes actually with the uh, specific power of the battery. And uh, today the uh, specific power of uh, best batteries is uh, about uh, as high as uh, uh, around uh, 1,000, one, one kilowatt per kg. So uh, even sometimes higher, depending on you know the engineering of the car and of the battery. So anyway, the, the, the order of magnitude for good batteries is about one kilowatt per kg, okay? And that converts to about two and a half kilowatt per liter. Number three is safety, and this is very important. So safety means that the battery has to be used in safe conditions. And uh, unfortunately, we hear from time to time some batteries uh, uh, undergo a thermal runaway, which means that the batteries start to uh, heat up. There is uh, some fume uh, gases uh, going out from the battery, and eventually there is a flames and explosion. So th this uh, 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 the safety of a battery is uh, really very important. And uh, unfortunately, we hear from time to time some, uh, as I will show you, uh, some electric cars uh, catching fire or batteries in cell phones and so on catching fire. It happens, but not often, fortunately. Batteries, lithium ion batteries in general are quite safe. And uh, in general, the, uh, the uh, amount of batteries that are, may show some thermal runaway is below one PPM. But still, because uh, the uh, industry has produced in 2021, uh, uh, about 10 billion cells. That means that uh, there are maybe 1,000 uh, cases every year all over the world where a battery catch fire. Uh, number four is the performance. And this performance is actually going with the temperature mostly. So uh, we need the battery to uh, operate in a wide range of temperature going from minus 20 degrees C to plus 50, uh, 60 degrees C. And that's another very important thing because of course, uh, if you have a, an electric car and you are using it in Chicago during winter or even in Chicago during summer, the difference in temperature can be about uh, maybe 70 degrees C between winter and summer. So your electric car should uh, operate in uh, very uh, uh, say extreme conditions like a minus 30 C uh, uh, and uh, plus uh, 40 degrees C. So th this is very important. And uh, that goes actually with the stability of the electrolyte first. Uh, the electrolyte is an organic liquid. So it may have, a, uh, uh, it has like a, a boiling point. Uh, where they, they, they convert from uh, liquid to gas. And uh, if a gas is formed, of course, there is a, a risk of uh, 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 the battery, uh, you know, having a, uh, release the gas uh, under high pressure and so on. And also, of course, it goes with the stability of the uh, anode and the cathode. And uh, uh, especially from the anode side, 
at high temperatures, there is a layer that forms on the surfaces of the graphite called the SEI, solid electrolyte interface. And that SEI by dissolving the electrolytes at high temperature. But the, uh, the SEI is very important for the uh, uh, good uh, operation of the, uh, of the battery of the anode. Uh, number five is the uh, lifespan. Of course, we want to keep the battery for as many as long year, um, how, uh, as many years as possible, uh, especially for electric car, because uh, in electric car, the battery accounts for more than thirty percent to thirty three percent of the the total cost. So you don't want to change your battery every other year. Uh, so that's why the lifespan of the battery is very important. And that goes also for, of course, uh, depends on the, the, the conditions like uh, the uh, temperature and also the, the rate by, the, by which the battery is charged and discharged that can affect the, uh, the life of the lifespan of the battery. Also the choice of materials, anode and cathode, that's very important for uh, ensuring the uh, lifespan, which means that we need the material that's uh, degrade a little bit, not so much, uh, during the operation of charge and discharge. And then the last but not the least, but uh, this is just a summary is the cost. Of course, we don't want to spend too much money in, uh, in a battery, especially for an uh, electric car. So the cost goes, of course, with the materials and also for the manufacturing costs, which actually are now reduced uh, significantly. And as a result, actually, the cost has dropped from uh, above one thousand uh, uh, dollars U.S. dollars per kilowatt hours in uh, maybe the mid nineties to now it's below one hundred uh, dollars per kilowatt hour, uh, which means that because of uh, and uh, scale you know production scale effects, the the cost of the dollar per kilowatt hour has dropped very significantly, and uh, some are all, even talking about. Uh, uh, below $100 uh, dollars per kilowatt hour, like 75. So, but anyway, I mean, of course, the cost goes also with the cost of materials. And that's another very important issue because uh, as we are going to uh, start this uh, big uh, industrial revolution, moving from uh, internal combustion cars to uh, electric vehicles, uh, there is, uh, of course, there are more and more gigafactories in the world uh, for the production of lithium batteries, especially in Europe, uh, where actually uh, 25, more than 25 gigafactories are either uh, already uh, operational or in uh, on their way. In the next years, uh, 2023 and 2024, we will see 25 plus uh, gigafactories in, uh, in, in Europe, which means that the, the, uh, uh, the, the market share or the production share of the uh, European uh, Community uh, un uh, Union uh, uh, will go from about 3%, almost 3% last year to more than 20% in 2025. So this is a huge effort. It will cost, uh, I mean, uh, the uh, uh, investment is uh, over, $100 billion uh, in Europe uh, has been invested to build these gigafactories. So just to tell you, I mean, uh, because of the scale, I mean, we are, uh, you know, there is a, a huge demand on lithium ion batteries because of the uh, electromobility, uh, etc. Uh, this puts a lot of pressure on, uh, on the materials that we will be using in a battery, especially the graphite, the, uh, the cathode materials, especially those based on cobalt and uh, also on the, uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, the nickel and the uh, other materials like copper, which are used uh, and the electrolytes as well. So all the, uh, the active materials, anode, cathode and electrolyte, the, the, the cost will be going back very high. So I think uh, the, 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 the dollar per kilowatt hour may be increasing for the next uh, uh, decade. So according to the chemistry of a battery, the, the uh, uh, figure of merit will be changing. So for the uh, uh, cobalt oxide, uh, you see that energy density is very high, but the power density is low, safety is medium, performance is not bad, 
uh, lifespan is uh, average and the cost is also very high. So uh, this battery can be used uh, with pure lithium cobalt oxide only in uh, mat uh, equipment like uh, cell phones where the, the, the cost of the battery versus the cost of the, uh, the device is uh, less than 10%. So in this case, yes, we can use uh, lithium cobalt oxide with uh, uh, maybe even if uh, the cost is high. Uh, with lithium manganese uh, the, the, on the, uh, the middle, the LIMN204, the spinel, the manganese spinel, uh, you see that energy density is lower, the power density is uh, higher, safety is a little bit uh, better. The performance, especially at high temperature, is uh, poor, and the lifespan is not that much, and the cost is average. So, so anyway, I don't, I don't want to cover just, just to, to tell you that according to the application, uh, the figure of the choice of materials, uh, anode and cathode, uh, will be determined. Uh, so we are probably going to use. Um, uh, like cobalt oxide, as I said, for high energy and uh, NMC for high energy as well. And you can see that NMC uh, on the right hand, on the right hand, on the top right hand, this is today the best uh, chemistry. And that's why it is so popular in almost every application, including the mobile electronics and uh, electric mobility. So basically what we want to compare in this uh, figure of merit is the total surface area of you know the, the the gray part the gray the 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 the, uh, the surface uh, uh, inside the, the the polygon the hexagon so uh, the the large, the biggest is the surface the better is the battery and you can see that uh, nmc has the, the the largest surface area it means that the the uh, the performance has quite well the safety is good the power density is good the energy density etc all right so uh, uh, if we go to the bottom right uh, for the LTO, the lithium titanate and uh, lithium iron phosphate, you see the safety is very high. Yes, power density is very high, but energy density is very low and the cost is very low and the lifespan is very high. Uh, so, I mean, for some applications, it's uh, suitable to use uh, lithium titanate. And I heard that uh, even in Japan, the, the the Shinkansen is using uh, LTO uh, LFP uh, chemistry for uh, uh, in case the, there is a, a shortage in uh, electric power. So it's enabled the, the Shinkansen, the, the bullet train, to uh, run for maybe 10 or 20 kilometers so they can go to the nearest uh, train station so people are not stopped in the middle of the country. So anyway, I mean, the, this uh, battery is now uh, mostly uh, developed by uh, Toshiba in Japan, maybe other, co other uh, companies in, uh, in America, maybe in Korea. They are developing this battery for very, very specific markets, uh, niche markets. All right, so this uh, slide also shows why lithium ion batteries are dominating the uh, the, the battery uh, uh, industry for any application. Uh, this. Uh, slide shows what we call the Ragoni plot. Ragoni is actually the energy, the power density versus energy density. So basically, when you uh, go from uh, uh, on the y axis from bottom to top, if you are driving a car, you are going faster and faster. And if you are looking uh, in the x axis, the energy density, uh, as you go from left to right, you are increasing the, the driving range, the, the, the energy, the total energy of the, the battery. So uh, as compared to any other chemistry that is commercially available, uh, lithium ion battery is now the, the choice battery uh, because of uh, this uh, outstanding uh, performance in uh, energy and in power. Applications from you know, small devices like uh, mobile electronics, uh, laptop computers, uh, electric bikes, uh, scooters, small cars like carts, and for electric mobility, electric cars like uh, Tesla and other, you know, every uh, car manufacturers worldwide uh, are moving to electric, uh, uh, electric vehicles, uh, trucks, uh, trains, uh, every electronic systems can use now a battery uh, 
so we are moving from uh, uh, systems that are dependent on the the, the uh, AC power to batteries, and that's why the uh, market or the demand for lithium ion batteries is increasing by about twenty percent a year. Okay, the very important applications is the uh, clean energy or the uh, uh, sustainable energy like a solar wind uh, for energy storage so that's a very important and also in buildings and uh, in in uh, uh, businesses so that you can they are using and houses of course in houses uh, we the, i mean uh, batteries can be used to store energy uh, so as i mean you can uh, use your stored energy during peak hours uh, and you can make a 30 percent uh, economy in your uh, electrical bill some buildings are zero energy buildings which means that they produce their own energy so they don't pay any uh, electric bills anymore so that's another trend and in uh, in singapore we have uh, uh, many buildings now which are operating uh, totally out uh, outside or uh, uh, from the grid Okay, now I would like to summarize what are, to my opinion, uh, the uh, most uh, uh, important uh, limitations of lithium-ion batteries. Besides, of course, the uh, what I said, the the, uh, the materials, the the the, uh, uh, the materials that uh, you know from the mines or for resources uh, for lithium, for cobalt, etc., which is another uh, topic. The, I'm talking only about you know the. Uh, the uh, the battery management system. So number one is safety. Okay, uh, of course safety we don't want to compromise it because it goes with uh, life sometimes, and uh, you don't want to see any fire. But uh, unfortunately, as I said, it happens from time to time. Uh, number two issue is the uh, long charging time, and this is important for electric vehicles because today. Uh, if you go to a gas station, you can fill your tank in uh, less than 10 minutes, but uh, batteries uh, takes more than uh, uh, 10 minutes to be fully charged. So uh, there are uh, many announcements of fast charging uh, below 30 minutes sometimes, but in 30 minutes, they give you only uh, part charge. So it's not going from zero to 100%. It's only between 20 and 80. So they are giving you like 60% of the total capacity of the cell in 30 minutes. The other important thing is the range, the driving range. Uh, so today, uh, the best uh, uh, electric vehicles can run for 600 kilometers. And this one should be extended to close to 900 kilometers per charge, uh, which actually uh, in uh, some of the uh, internal combustion cars, if you are not driving too fast and you are not uh, driving your car like a Formula One, you can uh, drive between 800 and 900 kilometer uh, for, uh, after you fill your tank. And the last, uh, not least, is the short life, uh, service life of the battery. So today, uh, most of the batteries are uh, about five years, maybe six or seven years or eight years, but this has to be extended to at least 10 years. And this converts actually to a total amount of uh, miles that you want to drive uh, over the life of the battery pack. And this uh, the life, uh, the total uh, 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 miles that you, you, you need to drive is uh, maybe around 150,000 miles or 200,000 miles, which would be ideal uh, situation. But uh, today uh, it has not been proven that uh, one single car can give you this amount of uh, miles, like 200,000 200, miles. Okay, so let me uh, show you to illustrate the safety problem with batteries. So this is the kind of picture that we don't want to see, like a car uh, catching fire or cell phone catching fire. Uh, if you Google uh, uh, lithium ion battery and fire, you will have uh, uh, maybe 1 million hits. So uh, this uh, happens from time to time. And of course, you don't want to be there when uh, uh, lithium ion battery catch fire because the uh, temperature can uh, raise, can go higher than 800 degrees C. So it's really, and uh, it's like a, a fireworks. Uh, so it's very impressive to, to, to see uh, uh, 
a thermal runaway uh, battery uh, catching fire or exploding. It's very, very uh, spectacular. Okay, so you don't want to see this. Uh, the charging time, the other issue. So this table shows actually for uh, the cars that are available today, what is the, the average uh, charging time uh, according to the, uh, the type of uh, charger that we are using. There are two, three types of chargers. So the, uh, you can see in this column that the, the fastest charging full charge is with the, the i8 uh, of BMW uh, that gives you about uh, 1.8 hours uh, to fully charge. And uh, uh, of course, the, 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 the charging can be higher, like uh, eight, eight, uh, eight hours uh, for the Bolt, uh, Chevrolet, the Chevy Bolt. Uh, if we are using the, uh, the 150 kilowatt uh, charger. Okay, so uh, this slide shows, uh, let me, uh, yeah, this, this slide shows actually the uh, charging time, uh, the, the, the power, excuse me, the power versus time during the charge. So the, the interesting thing is that when we are using the uh, conventional uh, method for charging a battery, like a constant current based, CC based uh, charging methods, like CCCV or multi-stage CC or pulse, and other, uh, you know, constant current use, uh, you know, methods. The the power is not constant. If you have like a, a three hundred and fifty kilowatt uh, charging station, you see that the power is decreasing with time. And the reason why is that uh, the temperature, the the battery pack temperature, will increase very very uh, fast. So uh, after uh, after only uh, between five and 10 minutes, you have already reached the uh, uh, safety, uh, the temperature safety limit, which is about 50 degrees C, according to Tesla. So Tesla, they, if they are using the 250, their supercharged charger, the V3 supercharger, they, after five minutes, the temperature is already 50 degrees C. So they have to decrease the power by half. So they will go from 250 to 125. And then the temperature uh, uh, reaches 50 degree again, and then they will divide the power by half and so on. So uh, by doing this, of course, every time you decrease the power, you extend the time for charging. So at the end of the day, you charge your battery fully charged uh, in a time higher than 60 minutes, which is common. I mean, uh, there is no one charger today uh, enabling fully charged uh, battery from zero to 100% in uh, less than one hour. Okay, so I want to just to show you uh, the, the most common method for charging a, a battery uh, that are used today. CCCV here on the left, uh, top left hand, uh, basically you apply a constant current and the voltage reaches the limit. And then you apply that limit, uh, basically about 4.2, 4.3 volt if the battery is based on uh, uh, metal oxide and about 3.8 volt if it is uh, LFP based. And when you apply a constant voltage, you see that the current drops. So the charge uh, of the battery will be slower. I mean, the rate by which you're charging is slower because the current is dropping and that's why you need more time. So if you are using CCCV, uh, to my knowledge, there is no uh, way that you can charge, fully charge your battery in, uh, in less than one hour. Uh, there's the other uh, variant of the uh, uh, CCCV called multi-stage constant current. And basically this is what uh, Tesla somehow uh, is doing. Instead of uh, having uh, uh, you know, a constant current, you start with a constant current until you reach uh, a voltage value, and then you drop to the next uh, uh, current IC2, and then uh, the voltage increase again, and so on and so on, until you fully charge the battery. So this multi-stage uh, constant current is the most popular method that probably your uh, cell phone uh, charger and uh, for electric car charger is using today. 
okay uh yes I don't know what happens. Okay, so yeah, I don't know. It's slow. So anyway, there, there was a, a paper, a review paper on the uh, fast charging. And uh, this uh, review was published uh, three years ago uh, in uh, 2019. And basically, this is a group of many authors here, maybe 20 of them. And they reviewed many, many types of batteries and many methods of charging and so on. So uh, they came to the conclusion, and I hope I can, yeah. The conclusion is that if you want to charge a battery, uh, fast charge below one hour, basically what you end up doing is uh, heat generation, the temperature will increase. Uh, lithium plating on the anode, which means that instead of having lithium intercalated between the graphene layers, it will uh, deposit as metallic lithium. And that uh, uh, lithium plating is very dangerous because uh, it may end up growing some dendrites, which are lithium metal filaments that can cross from the anode to the cathode and create a lo uh, local uh, uh, short circuit. So it's very dangerous. So lithium plating uh, industry is looking at it very, very carefully because it uh, uh, raises a safety problem. And also, uh, of course, uh, the, this lithium plating uh, will be consumed by the electrolytes. And uh, so the capacity of the battery will be decreasing if you have uh, uh, that phenomenon of lithium plating. Uh, lithium plating occurs when the, the rate is very high, if you are using high current, constant current, and also when the temperature during the charging is low. So that's why some charger do not work below some temperatures like uh, below 10 degrees C it's difficult to charge a battery. So the system will uh, uh, ask you maybe to, to heat up the battery, to put it in a, uh, in a space when the temperature is higher than 10 degrees before uh, you know, charging it. Because uh, the risk of having the lithium plating and the lithium dendrite increases with the low, at low temperatures. Materials degradation, that's also another uh, effect because uh, uh, if we apply, uh, high voltage for a long time. Uh, there's a, an oxidation of the uh, the electrolytes, and also uh, uh, a degradation of the uh, the cathode material. If it is a uh, oxide, it will go from uh, uh, lamellar structure, uh, uh, hexagonal structure to a cubic structure, and that cubic structure, like spinel, uh, uh, has the lower electrochemical uh, characteristics like properties. So uh, the cathode uh, can degrade, the anode can degrade also by the, uh, uh, the growth of the SEI uh, on the surface of the, the, the graphite anode. And that SEI of course uh, uh, will increase the internal uh, resistance of the cell and makes the transfer of lithium from uh, the electrolyte to the anode much slower. So the system will become uh, will degrade. Uh, you cannot have 100% of charge below one, uh, one hour, as I said. And also, of course, the result of all of this is uh, the reduced uh, cycle life. And uh, the, the life of the battery will be reduced. If you charge a battery below one hour, uh, and uh, you do it very often. And finally, of course, the safety uh, thermal runway which uh, I mean, unfortunately happened to us in my lab. We used the CCCV to charge a battery below one hour. And I can tell you, we got, we got a fire uh, in the lab. Okay, number three, uh, problem Mr. is the Rashi, Yes. Mr. Rashi, sorry for interrupting. Uh, I know that your research work is very extensive. As we are running out of time, I'd like you to wrap up the, the remarks. So we, because I, I know that we have several questions from the audience and then okay. maybe you can go through these items very, what are the, the main remarks? Okay, no problem. If there are questions, I will be happy to take them anytime. You go ahead. Are there any questions now or should I continue? Fernando, yes. please. Yes, uh, Prof. Yes, I'm me, Chris Tanto from Indonesia. Yes. Sorry, probably it's a, a, a more of the micro question. One is Indonesia is uh, quite a large producer of nickel, right? Yes. 
and yes. they set to be made into a battery precursor. Yes. But uh, we are very concerned about, is there any future of nickel in the battery space so that uh, we know now if we, what our optimism is has got a base at all. Secondly, uh, there is another question is uh, that I learned about a uh, large scale battery or large uh, electric storage uh, developed by MIT uh, by Professor Sadoe uh, mm -hmm. by using molten metal. So, mm. so how is it how is it uh, related to your uh, chemical battery? Are they compared? Are they competitive or are they not? Thank you. All right. So for the uh, nickel, uh, the, the the trend is actually to reduce the. Uh, uh, as I said, NMC has the best you know uh, performance today in energy, power, and so on. And NMC N is nickel. Okay, uh, M is manganese, and C is cobalt. So basically, at the beginning, uh, NMC was one third, one third, one third. So it means that. 33% uh, is nickel, 33% of uh, manganese, and 33% was cobalt. But with time, uh, we realized that actually we can reduce the, uh, the fraction of, uh, of cobalt at the expense of, uh, or at the profits of uh, nickel. So today, the, uh, the richest, the nickel richest cathode is 811. It means that 80% uh, is nickel, uh, one ten percent is manganese and ten percent is cobalt. Okay, so the answer your question, yes, this, uh, definitely, the nickel in Indonesia will be very important for the future of lithium ion batteries, and uh, I, I I hope uh, the Indonesian government will uh, start to uh, you know uh, uh, give uh, more efforts in uh, you know extracting nickel and converting it to NMC materials, and even maybe. Uh, uh, get a, a, a gigafactory in uh, in uh, in uh, Indonesia because Indonesia is a very populated country, and uh, you are in uh, Southeast Asia. There is a huge market. So anyway, I mean, uh, it's actually time for Indonesia to enter the, the gigafactory business uh, in the future. Now, for the uh, uh, liquid metal uh, chemistry uh, from the MIT, of course, I'm aware about this. Uh, 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 technology, uh, of course, it doesn't it doesn't um, apply to mobile electronics and to electric cars because the uh, the temperature for molten uh, metals is above six hundred degrees C. Okay, so that solves the problem. However, this uh, chemistry may be interesting for energy storage, like for wind and solar. But uh, so far, I haven't seen uh, a big development of the uh, liquid uh, metal uh, battery worldwide, when this uh, chemistry has been actually uh, developed for more than 10 years. So we will see what the future will tell us. Uh, it's, um, to me, this uh, uh, chemistry is a little bit uh, exotic. It works, but it is exotic. And we don't have enough time, I mean, uh, like uh, uh, experience in the field to decide whether this uh, chemistry will uh, make it as compared to other uh, uh, chemistry that uh, operates at uh, ambient temperatures, like the flow, uh, redox flow batteries, okay, which uh, operates uh, in, uh, in, uh, at ambient temperatures. So the, the fact that this uh, chemistry uh, works only at very high temperatures may be an issue. Any other questions? Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, uh, uh, Professor Hashid, um, a similar question. Here in Brazil, we are on the biggest producer of, uh, of uh, uh, niobium. And yes. I don't know if you perceive the, um, how you see the application of niobium for the LIB, uh, uh, it, 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 how is the impact? I know the cost is very high, but the other impact in the, in the, in the other attributes, performance attributes of the, figure of the merit? Well, uh, now you okay. I can tell you since I would say the uh, early 90s when uh, the uh, lithium ion battery has been commercialized, I can tell you there have been maybe millions of men hours or men hours working uh, in research in 
all over in Asia, in Europe, in United States to develop new materials, you know, for to increase the energy density and the performance of the battery in general. So of course, niobium has been considered, uh, niobium oxide uh, has been considered, litiated uh, niobium oxide has been considered as the uh, cathode material, or even maybe the anode in some cases, in some combinations. So uh, to my knowledge, as compared to the uh, materials that are used today in commercial batteries, like, uh, as I said, uh, NMC or other metal oxides, like a nickel, cobalt, manganese based oxide and lithium iron phosphate, uh, uh, the performance of niobium based uh, electrode materials is not there. So uh, it doesn't mean that uh, niobium has no future. It means that at this time, uh, research or uh, engineering uh, uh, is uh, more I mean, needed to uh, design a niobium containing uh, uh, electron materials for uh, batteries by com combining uh, niobium with other elements. So uh, I think, yeah, I mean, uh, there, there's still a space for maybe improving the, the niobium based uh, electron materials. But today, unfortunately, there is no much choices of materials uh, for lithium ion batteries, except graphite and silicon uh, and uh, uh, titanate, lithium titanate for the anode, and lithium iron phosphate and lithium uh, oxide, like cobalt, nickel, manganese based oxides, uh, you know, as the cathode. So uh, the, um, the, uh, the, there's no much choices. <laughs> so the, the chemistry somehow is now uh, almost uh, frozen. We cannot change much the, the chemistry, except if uh, maybe some uh, person comes with the genius idea about, uh, you know, a uh, new uh, anode, a new cathode that, uh, uh, you know, increases the energy density, or at least increases one of the figure, f you know, the, the figures that I showed you, the power, uh, the safety or the, the, the high temperature, low temperature performance and so on. So today I don't see anything coming. And I can tell you uh, lots and lots of work is still going on uh, in, uh, in academia, uh, national labs and also in industry to uh, develop uh, new, new chemistries. And one of them, because you, you are giving me the opportunity, one of them is uh, the so-called uh, solid state uh, lithium battery. Uh, in which we, instead of graphite, the, they are thinking to use uh, uh, metallic lithium and with solid state electrolytes. So that's another uh, area of uh, uh, very intense research today. And on paper, at least on paper, if you are using lithium instead of graphite, you can increase the energy density by 2x on paper, okay? But uh, in practice, uh, lithium uh, is very, I would say, uh, tricky. Uh, anode material, so it's not easy to uh, to use it in uh, in at ambient temperatures. If you increase the temperature, like a lithium uh, polymer electrolyte batteries, yeah, that works. The lithium metal works in high temperatures with the polymer electrolytes. And uh, there is already a company in France, uh, Bolloré, who uh, are uh, producing this uh, uh, lithium metal and uh, polymer electrolyte uh, uh, rechargeable battery. Now for solid states, uh, there is still a question mark. Uh, there have been many billion of dollars uh, invested in this technology, but we haven't seen anything, you know, like testing this bad, this chemistry in uh, real electric vehicles. Many say, if this chemistry will make it, it will not be before 10 years from now. So anyway, just to, to give you a uh, little idea about what's going on in the, 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 the lithium battery uh, business. Other batteries like uh, sodium ion battery, very attractive because sodium is uh, more abundant uh, than lithium and the cheaper, but the energy density much lower. I'm not sure the sodium uh, ion battery makes it in the, the life uh, lifespan of the battery. So uh, again, when we gain in the cost, we lose in other uh, figures uh, of merit. So like the power density, uh, can we charge a sodium uh, ion battery in less than one hour? Uh, energy density, of course, is one of them and so on. So anyway, I mean, again, sorry to tell you, but today the only practical lithium ion batteries 
uh, that are found in the in the, uh, you know commercial commercially in the markets are graphite and uh, either uh, LFP or NMC batteries. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rashid. We have also two other questions and one comment. Uh, Bob, if you want to ask the question. Sure. Uh, two things. One is, uh, where are these exotic metals located? Uh, is China going to be able to uh, have a monopoly as they do in magnets uh, with some of the exotic materials? The second is the comparison of these lithium or other combination batteries uh, with um, fuel cells, hydrogen, uh, onboard plasma generation of hydrogen, because that's a competing technology uh, that would reduce the need for uh, batteries to drive the whole vehicle. Well, you're absolutely right. I mean, uh, there are many other options actually for energy storage or uh, energy conversion. Uh, hydrogen is one of them, of course. Uh, hydrogen is the, the, the cleanest uh, uh, energy vector <laughs> uh, because uh, when you use it in the fuel cell, you will just produce water and uh, electric energy and a little bit of heat. So uh, the problem with uh, uh, hydrogen is number one, uh, if we, we want to uh, decarbonate or has, have more less uh, carbon fingerprint uh, for the production of hydrogen, we have to make clean hydrogen, what they call green hydrogen from the electrolysis of uh, seawater. And uh, so far this technology is just at its, uh, I would say, uh, start for mass production. Uh, there are also many, many billions of dollars invested in Europe and uh, in America, in, in uh, Asia for pr producing green hydrogen. It's the future. Uh, the problem with hydrogen is also not only you, uh, you have to produce it from uh, by electrolysis using uh, uh, like a, a sustainable or renewable energy like solar and wind or other sources of uh, you know geothermal and so on. Um, once you produce it, you have to uh, compress it to, to make it uh, to cool it to make it liquid, and then transport it. Uh, so you have to have a, uh, an infrastructure to be able actually to provide hydrogen to uh, like you have like gasoline now, and this is very 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 difficult, and uh, it may become uh, not very much cost effective in the future. So that's why, I mean, hydrogen is the best, to me, is the best material, but uh, on paper. And uh, of course, uh, I drove uh, cars in Japan uh, back to the mid nineties, uh, which were powered by a fuel cell by Toyota. And uh, also I drove a BMW car in California that was powered by uh, hydrogen directly. So the, the engine was uh, like a combustion, uh, <coughs> combustion engine where hydrogen is the fuel and uh, taking oxygen from the air and uh, it produces only water from the exhaust uh, pipe. So uh, all of these technologies exist, but the problem is how can we get hydrogen, uh, uh, cheap hydrogen and everywhere hydrogen? Electricity is almost everywhere, of course. So we can uh, imagine uh, charging a battery in, a, in your car, in your home uh, overnight, or you, know, you go to, uh, fast charging station, you can get uh, in uh, maybe 15 minutes or 20 minutes, uh, something like 100 mile uh, range of driving. So it's not too bad. But hydrogen uh, is not found <laughs> to my knowledge, not, not, not yet. So it will take another, at least I would say 20 years before we see uh, you know, uh, hydrogen available like uh, uh, gasoline today. Uh, it will uh, require lots and lots of cost reduction in all the, the steps to, uh, you know, produce, uh, compress, uh, liquefy, and transport and uh, store and so on. There is all these steps that are, uh, you know, add to the cost, the final cost of the, the hydrogen. So what was the first question, excuse me? Hydrogen molecule also is very small, so it's very easy to escape. That's the problem they have in refineries. So if you I, I didn't get the question. Sorry, I, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't so understand. Also with hydrogen, the molecule yes. itself is very small. So it's easy. Yes, to correct. 
Okay, so That's if you, in Europe they were putting tanks underneath hydrogen tanks underneath the cars, well, correct. basically you're running on top of a bomb, right? That's absolutely right. I mean, uh, hydrogen you have to have uh, very special like uh, tanks, so as there is no leak because uh, uh, hydrogen, as you said, is very small molecule, and uh, uh, you have to have very uh, small. Uh, uh, nano pores in the in the, uh, almost no pores or nano pores uh, in the in the tank so as uh, the, the there is no uh, risk of hydrogen uh, going you know uh, out from the tank that's another very important thing but i think technology is there so some uh, uh, carbon composites you know uh, based the tanks makes it make it so you can you can store hydrogen at a quite high pressure maybe more than uh, uh, 100 or 120 uh, atmosphere and uh, in the liquid uh, liquid phase and uh, there's no there's no risk actually of uh, leakage from uh, from the walls of the the tank okay so anyway i mean uh, again we have i mean hydrogen has been considered for energy since i would say the, the, the maybe the 40s or 50s okay so more than uh, uh, 70 years ago <laughs> and uh, uh, but still uh, it didn't make it to mass production for electric mobility so far uh, the cost i mean of a fuel cell as you know uh, hydrogen based fuel cells uh, need a catalyst like a platinum platinum is very rare and very expensive so that's add another uh, layer of cost to the the, the system so there are many barriers so far. Uh, uh, the, the good thing about, uh, I would say, the, uh, uh, the fuel cell is their high energy density, very high energy density. It means that uh, one tank, uh, maybe five kilos or less of hydrogen will allow you to drive for more than 1,000 miles. So that's, that's very, very interesting, very uh, attractive. But uh, I think there's still a need for, you know, uh, more uh, improvements of the the hydrogen uh, uh, chain value, you know, from uh, you know uh, seawater to your uh, car uh, before it makes it in the market. Any other question, uh, Mr. Rashid? So there are several other questions, but before going through those, can you stop sharing the presentation so we can see each other faces? I think it's better like that. Unfortunately, okay. we are running out of time, so let's go through this <laughs> last question. Uh, let's go. The, the interest is very high. Let's go through this last question. And I'll give you the floor um, to okay. do the final remarks. Then, uh, please, okay. if you can uh, stop sharing the screen. Uh, so the, the the other question is from Sofiani, if I'm pronouncing it well. Um, Sofiani, if you are there uh, and it's easy for you to open the microphone, can you ask the question? Yes, the question uh, to dear uh, Mr. Rashid, they ask about uh, the improvement of uh, Li battery. You talk about that will be nickel in uh, 80% uh, in uh, concentration. Uh, do you will uh, change of imp uh, important of cobalt, like here Moroccan uh, economic now is uh, growing about uh, cobalt. Did the uh, Li battery will change in concentrations and the improvement just with nickel in the future? As I said, there, there is a, like a range of uh, uh, nickel, manganese and cobalt composition in the cathode. Or when we say NMC, NMC uh, goes with many, many types of uh, composition. So the, as I said, maybe the one that has been, uh, we started using is uh, one third, one third, one third of each uh, element. And uh, because of the cobalt is more expensive as uh, more strategic. So the industry has tried to reduce the amounts of cobalt in the cathode. And today, the lowest amounts of cobalt in NMC is 10%, okay? But still, if you look at the amount, the, 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 the amount of batteries that we need for the next 10 years, okay? We will uh, uh, reach about, uh, 2.5 to 3 terawatt hours. Tera, 1,000 mega, uh, giga, watt hours, okay? In uh, 2030, okay? So if you convert this 2.5 to 3 terawatt hours 
to the amount of cobalt, you will see that there is not enough cobalt. <laughs> Even if you are using only 10% in the cathode. So, I mean, there's no problem for, for I mean, the, 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 the cobalt. The only problem is, do we have enough cobalt? And uh, that's the, 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 the main question. So uh, that's why many companies started now to recycle batteries and to extract the cobalt from uh, batteries that's uh, reached the end of life. Or uh, So there's a recycling uh, industry now is developing for, for lithium batteries uh, to recover nickel, manganese, cobalt, copper, uh, graphite, lithium, uh, uh, and so on. So that, that's uh, another thing. So I think um, cobalt is... Um, essential in the composition of the cathode. Uh, if you use only uh, nickel and manganese, uh, you will not make it. I mean, uh, there is a spinel phase based on uh, uh, lithium, nickel, manganese oxide. Uh, it's a five volt battery or higher than 4.5 volt battery. And, uh, but the problem is uh, the, the stability, the thermal stability and the, uh, the cycle life. So you need to have cobalt, which is good news for Morocco. <laughs> that still we need cobalt for, for you know, for uh, to make a good, uh, lasting, uh, long-lasting cathode material. Thank you, Mr. Rashid. Welcome. Thank you, Mr. Rashid. So the other question comes from Rogelio. Uh, Rogelio, please, if you can ask the question. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, Rashid, uh, when uh, we were in, in California, yes, uh, and you were still working for for Caltech, yes, uh, one of the projects that you had is a, a, a fast uh, battery charger yes. that combines three elements: temperature, well, that controls tightly three elements: temperature, voltage, and, and current. And this kind of uh, charger allows you not only to increase the life of the battery, but also to expedite the charging of the battery. Have you done any, any more developments in that area, please? Well, I think yes, the answer is yes. And that, that will be the second part of my presentation. So <laughs> thank you for asking the question. And by the way, I'm still having a, an appointment with Caltech as we speak. I mean, I'm now visiting uh, associates uh, with, with Caltech. Yeah, you, 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 you're working now with, with uh, Bill, right? Bill Goddard, yes, yes Professor yes, Bill Goddard, yes. yes, absolutely. So anyway, yeah, I mean, uh, you will see uh, in the, 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 next, the second part of my presentation how we solve the problem of fast charging, yes. I, I think, Mr. Rashid, we need to invite you once again because your uh, research and wisdom is extensive and I, I believe we have a lot to learn from you. Um, no problem. I mean, if you, if it's up to you. I mean, if you want to organize a second, you know, second part of uh, my presentation, I would be happy to do it anytime next week. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mrs. Hiba has a, has a question, please. Feel free to I guess I have, I have a good question. Uh, now I'm working on one of the lithium batteries issues, is, uh, which is battery service life. Since life of batteries is short and it's mostly hard to recycle, um, I'm working on oxidizing and modifying electrodes to use them for new applications. So are you talking about a second life? For, uh, yes, yes. Okay, so my, yeah. my question is, apart from cycling, are there any other fields or areas for reusing spent uh, lithium batteries? Okay, uh, I mean, in the uh, life of the battery, we have, uh, I would say, three phases. Phase one is when the battery is used in the device like electric car or cell phone or something like that, okay, or energy storage, okay. And uh, for electric cars, the, uh, the conditions anti uh, under which the battery is operating is quite uh, tough because there are mechanical vibrations, uh, you have temperature, you have acceleration, you have uh, uh, charging conditions and so on. So uh, the battery performance will decrease with the, 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 the time, which is normal, until you as a driver, you realize that even when your battery is fully charged, you cannot 
drive as long, uh, you know, mice as as many mice as before. Okay, so what you do at that time uh, when you reach this, you go back to Tesla or to your battery, uh, your car manufacturer, and say, okay, I need a new battery pack. Okay, so the battery pack that you which can be replaced okay that's actually what uh renault in france does they, they 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 give you when you buy an electric car from renault you don't buy the battery pack it belongs to the company and uh, it's under lease so you pay like 100 euros every month as a lease and then when you are not happy with the performance of battery pack they will change it for you anyway when this battery pack is taken out from a car because the performance of the car is lower the battery pack can still be used for another application. This is called second life. And the, the other application mostly is energy storage, which means that if you are uh, having a, a solar field, a solar energy field, uh, photovoltaics, and uh, also wind you know, field, uh, and you are uh, producing uh, electricity from the wind, you want to store it, okay? Because uh, 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 this uh, uh, clean energy, whatever sustainable energies, natural energy are, are intermittent. So you, you have no sun by definition during night, and you have no wind when there is no wind. So the the uh, the uh, pr power of these uh, uh, stations is uh, is uh, vary with time. Okay. So the only solution is to store. And because uh, storage is like stationary, it's not moving anymore, you can control the temperature. So the conditions for this uh, energy storage systems are less, I would say, drastic or uh, demanding than an electric car. So by using the battery in a second life, you give it another two, three, four years before the, the end of life. And when the battery uh, reaches the end of life, which means that the uh, you cannot charge it anymore, or when you charge it, it doesn't give you uh, enough energy. You go and you recycle. So this is phase three. So phase one in the, in the electric cars, phase two in electric uh, uh, energy storage system, and phase three is when you do uh, the recycling. Okay, so uh, recycling is becoming very important, and um, it is expected that in 2030, more than 30% of the materials will be coming from recycling. That's very important. So, as I said, I mean, uh, uh, recycling uh, industry is developing very fast now. It goes parallel to the uh, gigafactories. And some gigafactories, actually, they have uh, uh, like a subsidiary company that do uh, recycling. Uh, so anyway, I mean, uh, this is to summarize the situation for you that, uh, uh, of course, we don't want to uh, find uh, like batteries uh, uh, in in the nature, people uh, you know just uh, put you know put in the trash in the trash. You can, you, we don't want to see batteries in the trash. So that's why uh, many, even for cell phones industry or mobile electronics uh, industry, uh, they will recycle batteries. They will take the battery out and then they, they, they will recycle it. It's a profitable business. Recycling is a profitable business. Thank you, Mr. Rashid. I would like to give the floor a bit to Ron. Uh, Ron, if you can do a summary of the main insights of this presentation, what, what the audience needs to know and pay attention to, to these trends going on and what the industries uh, related to um, lithium batteries uh, have, you know, have to be prepared. Okay. Well, so, Rashid, thank you for an incredibly stimulating presentation and um, organized uh, staging, whether it's uh, energy generation, batteries, store, long-term storage, recycling, uh, incredibly uh, pivotal uh, innovations that are going on across that entire spectrum, across that entire ecosystem. Um, and I think we're definitely going to want to take you up on your offer to um, have a second uh, session to go sure. to the, kind of the next level of this. Uh, we've also, uh, Jimmy sponsored a uh, Innovation Olympics with uh, teams from different graduate schools around the world on um, green hydrogen and desert energy with renewables. So there's a lot of interest in this organization about kind of what if and what's next. So it's not only the incremental developments, which have been huge in lithium ion batteries, et cetera, but
but also kind of what's next and how do we account for that in the uh, improvements or replacement of infrastructure of various kinds, particularly to deal with the storage issues or long-term storage issues uh, of energy generated by renewables. So uh, thank you for your presentation. It includes insights for all of us, whether we're uh, directly involved in the uh, energy industry or indirectly involved as users or consumers. And uh, I thank you for all your work in your, in your uh, wonderful history, as well as uh, the work to come. So thank you much, and we'll be in touch to schedule a follow-up. Thank you. Yeah, and thank welcome. you, everybody, for participating everybody. in this and asking all the questions and hopefully uh, learning all the uh, insights and things that you can take from Dr. Rashid's uh, presentations. All right. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you very soon again, OK? <laughs> thank you. Au revoir. Thank you very much.